So in this unit, we're going to look at energy changes. We're going to start with some definitions here. So the study of energy changes during physical or chemical changes in matter is called thermochemistry. So thermochemistry is essentially the name of our unit. So energy is the ability to do work or the capacity to make change. If you are writing this down right now, you're making change on your paper that is requiring energy. And this is measured in joules. Joules is a re relatively small unit, so kilojoules is also used. And work is the amount of energy transferred by force over distance, also measured in joules. So we've got two kinds of energy to discuss. We have potential energy, which is the energy that's stored within something. And we have kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion. So you can see in our picture, our cyclist is moving up a hill. He is in motion, so that is kinetic energy. When he gets to the very top, he's, and he's at a standstill, essentially he has um, all potential energy because he's not in motion and then as soon as he goes down the hill the energy is being put back into kinetic so there it is changing between two forms and here's another example too uh, this girl has climbed up to a particular height and so she has kind of used kinetic energy to get to that height holds the ball the ball has potential energy and once she drops that then the potential energy is converted to kinetic energy the energy of motion Thermal energy, heat, and temperature. Some more definitions here. So thermal energy is the total quantity of kinetic and potential energy. The amount of thermal energy depends on the movement of the atoms, ions, or molecules of the substance. So if you're picturing water, uh, thermal energy depends on how much those water molecules are moving. When a substance absorbs thermal energy, its entities move faster and the substance heats up. Again, entities, I'm just referring to whatever substance is making it up. Again, it could be water molecules. And when a substance releases thermal energy into the surroundings, the substance cools. So let's talk about heat. Heat is the transfer of thermal energy from high to low or from a warm object to a cold object. So you can see the pot there. Uh, we have heat being transferred from the oven to the pot and then to the water itself. Now temperature, sometimes it's hard to define for people. They want to say how hot or how cold something is, but temperature is just really measuring kinetic energy. So if you have a high temperature, the particles are moving fast. And if you have a low temperature, the particles are moving very slowly. So we also need to discuss the law of conservation of energy, which states energy cannot be created or destroyed, only converted to other forms. The total energy of the universe is constant. There's no more energy being created within the universe. It was all created 13.7 billion years ago in the Big Bang. That's all the energy we've got. So we can say that the, uh, the change in energy of our universe is equal to zero, the net change. It's always the same. Energy is really just getting converted between one form to another. So any observation done by scientists must be defined further. When a reaction takes place, the components are known as the system, <coughs> and everything else is known as the surroundings. So essentially, our universe is equal to the energy from our system plus the energy from our surroundings. So the change in the energy of the universe would be the equal to the change in our system plus the change in surroundings. But in the end, this is all equal to zero. But we're particularly interested in those system and surrounding energy because if we rearrange, if there's a change in our system, uh, the energy of our system is equal to the negative energy of our surroundings. So we're going to have some negatives involved in here, and that's fine. Negatives are just, uh, they're just showing that there's some kind of change. Something got hot, something got cold. There's a net difference in our energy. So let's look at the synthesis of water in a test tube. So there is water being created from its elements. So all of our reactants and products would be considered the system. The hydrogen, oxygen, and water would be our system. And the test tube and the rest of the world would be considered the surroundings. So the surroundings are quite large. So we have a, a three types of systems we might encounter. An open system allows both matter and energy to enter and leave the system. And when I say an example, I mean, there's almost anything. If you had a cup of coffee sitting out, you've got heat escaping it. Um, and so there's an example. Essentially, anytime energy is moving between one state to another or one place to another, it's probably an open system that's trying to contain it. We also have a closed system 
where um, there's an exchange of energy but not matter. The picture here is Biosphere 2. This is a closed project where humans live or have lived in the past in the Arizona desert and the, they can have the energy of the sun but then no mass is going in or out. They just need to recycle what they have inside. And there's also an isolated system where neither energy or matter is is exchanged and really the universe is probably the only example of that. Maybe a thermos, a really good thermos. So let's talk about en exothermic and endothermic reactions. So during a chemical reaction, the chemical bonds in the reactant or reactants are broken and new bonds are formed to produce the products. So we have energy acting twice to break the chemical bonds and then to reform to make new bonds. So the breaking of bonds requires energy while the creation of new bonds releases energy. I think that makes sense. If you picture breaking a molecule in half with your hands, it would take energy. And then uh, you're putting it back together, some energy is released, potentially. So for a chemical reaction like the one described, the total energy in the system and surroundings must be the same. This means that energy must either enter the system from the surroundings or exit the system into the surroundings. And this is where our exothermic and endothermic reactions come into play. One is giving heat back to the system, and another is taking it out of the system. So a reaction that produces an excess of heat or thermal energy is known as an exothermic reaction. Heat exits the system into the surroundings. This is so because the energy required to break the bonds in the reactants is less than the energy released by the product formations. They're not equal. I will be showing that in a picture very soon here. Here it comes. So uh, if we made a little graph here, all right, yeah, we've got time elapsing, so your reaction's occurring, and we have potential energy. So because it's a, a, a reaction, we've got reactants to start with, and they have a particular amount of potential energy stored within them. It doesn't really matter how much they are. We're just putting it right in the middle there. So what happens in step one is our energy increases because we're breaking bonds. Energy is, uh, is uh, going up in our overall here. Now then what happens is uh, energy is required to form new bonds, and our products end up having a lower energy than what we started with. In fact, there's a net difference here. So this green arrow represents the change in energy. So if you look at the reactants and then you compare them to the products, our products have less energy. That means energy has escaped into the surroundings from our system. That must mean we have an exothermic reaction on our hands. So again, the products have less energy and the difference in energy has been given off in the form of most likely heat. So we're talking about endothermic here, same setup, same reactants, same energy broken, uh, but this time the energy required to form our new bonds is much less. Our products actually now have more energy. So we have this type of difference. So what's happened here now is that our reaction has gotten cold. We've actually taken energy from the surroundings and put it into the system, and that's why our products have more energy than our reactants.